Hey there, this is Robot here, Scooter West and Vespa Motorsport. Uh, today I got a Sprint right here, it belongs to one of my good friends. If you look at our past videos from maybe a year ago, I completely rebuilt this bike, like from a brand new frame. He let his friend borrow it and he ran it straight into a wall or something and completely totaled the bike. It only had like five miles on it or something. But check out some of our old videos. There's a video of this bike getting built from the ground up. But now 7,000 miles later and it's got a cylinder kit and all sorts of other fun upgrades. Um, it's in here for some service, but I want to show everybody the basic, basic inspections you should do on your own Vespa. Uh, this here is the Vespa Sprint. It's pretty much identical on the Primavera and very similar on the other Vespa models. And pretty much every scooter that comes through the, sh the service here, I'll do this basic check. Every mechanic should do this for their customers. Uh, but as an owner, this is something you should do like every month, just go over the basics on your scooter. So I'm gonna show you that. Number one most important thing you should be checking on your scooter is the air pressure. Uh, you won't believe how many scooters that come, come rolling through the shop and I, they have like five PSI, 10 PSI. You know, they're downright dangerous to ride, but a lot of people just don't check the air. Pretty simple to do. Uh, I recommend getting like a basic little air gauge like this. This goes up to 50 PSI or like two bar. Um, these are real accurate. There's nothing really to them. There's nice digital ones. I wouldn't trust the gas station ones, but you know, get one of these. We have these available. We've got the part number for you. So you got the, the Schrader valve, much like a bicycle or a car. Unthread the little cap. And you just take one of these gauges and push it right on the thing. And it's got 26 PSI in it. Uh, on the nameplate, it says 36. I tend to like to run about 32 to 34 with a single rider on the Sprint. This, that's on the rear tire. So I'm gonna go ahead and air that tire up and go to the front. Pretty much identical, but the pressure is gonna be a little bit lower on the front because there's less weight over the front tire. So again, oops, I let a little bit of the air out. Try again. And we're right at about 23. You can see it's like it was a notch below 25. I want to get the front right around 26 PSI. And this is kind of a fancy gauge here, but yeah, you see pretty much identical to the cheap mechanical gauge. And this, this thing's a, a calibrated gauge here. So there you go, 26 is all you need in the front. That's regardless if you have a passenger or you're riding the scooter solo. Pretty much across the board of all the modern Vespas, I run about 26 for the front tire on all the modern Vespas. And the rear, that's a little bit low. The rears tend to lose more pressure because they run, run a lot hotter. I'm gonna bring it right up to 34. 34, didn't let too much out. Check it with this gauge. And it's right there at 34 as well. Number two, you should be checking your engine oil. Uh, this bike's got a cylinder kit. I would be checking the oil probably every other gas stop. Just if you're riding it harder, it's going to definitely consume oil. A stock bike, you could probably go a thousand miles between checking the oil, uh, but definitely something important to do as an owner of any of the modern four-stroke Vespas. So on the right side of the engine, there's this dipstick right here. And you got to be careful. Right now the, the pipe's cool, but you have the header of the pipe right there and it's not something you want to touch. So keep in mind, um, have the scooter on the center stand on a level surface, this lift. That's very important when you're checking the oil. Pretty much unscrewed the dipstick and can go ahead and wipe that off. Now all the vest pucks, stick that back in. You can get a more accurate reading with a cool motor on the Vespas. You can check it as well with a hot motor. I think they usually run a little bit high when they're hot. Um, as you can see, the oil I don't know if the camera gets it, but there's oil all the way up the dipstick and it stops right there at that little mark. And that's, that's the high mark right there. Down here is your low mark. Um, so pretty much it, you're the safe running level if it's right at the high mark or above the low mark. A lot of people don't get that. Sometimes they'll overfill them and they'll be up here. That's too much oil and you're gonna have problems with the, the engine with too much oil. And of course, too little oil is very dangerous for the motor. 
A uh, dipstick that would be coming out dry with no oil on it would look just like that. And all you see is the cross hatching of the, uh, the dipstick. And say the oil's right at the tip, it would take about 200 cc's, 250 cc's, somewhere in that range of oil. One thing with the, the Primavera and Sprint, they're pretty difficult to fill. We have the, um, the special funnel that makes it easier to fill. Another option, if you're just topping off, you can use one of the syringes we sell, it's 60 milliliter syringes, so you can give it a couple squirts of oil very accurately if you need to top it off. Like I said, this scooter doesn't need to be topped off. Came out perfect. In fact, I recently did an oil change on this bike, so there's no issue there. Number three, you want to check your lights. I mean, you might think it's pretty obvious. You know the headlights working if you're riding at night. A lot of times people don't notice their taillights out. Riding it down the highway at night, probably not the safest idea. Uh, I'm going to show you all the lights you want to check, you know, on your Vespa Sprint. Keep in mind, this scooter's got the Euro kit, so it does not have the pod style turn signals. I'm going to go ahead and start the scooter. You see the brake lights work in. Check both brake switches. Your turn signals. And you want to do inspect the front as well. Make sure your turn signals in the front are working just as well. You got your running lights working. Make sure your high beam and low beam works. And check your horn. And the last light that a lot of people ignore is your license plate light. You can see that one's lighting up just fine there. One item that's overlooked by most uh, owners of these Vespas is setting the clock. Um, the owner's manual shows how to do it, but I'm gonna quickly show you how to change the uh, time on any of these modern Vespas, pretty much the Sprint Primavera and a 2015 and later GTS. They all have a very similar dash design. Um, you want to turn your ignition switch on and you have the odometer in mile in the total miles so make sure that you cycle through the mode until it's on total. You're going to hold the mode button until the hours flashes. So now it's flashing. I'm going to advance it to seven because we're going forward one hour. Hours, hold the button to advance to the minutes. And then momentarily click the, um, the mode button to advance the minutes here. So we're at 7.13. And I always notice they run a little slow for some reason on these newer Vespas. You can just let it time out or you can hold the button to exit out of the clock set mode. So now the clock set. Good to go until uh, daylight savings or summertime is around, six months down the road here. All right, the fourth item you want to check occasionally on your own Vespa is the battery. And plus, it's good to know. I mean, the battery's a wear item, much like a tire. They have a limited lifetime. You're going to have to replace it at some point, whether you let the battery go all the way dead, you can attempt to charge it, or if it's just flat, dead, and not going to take a charge, you need to replace it. So I'm going to show you how to check your battery. Uh, you're going to need two tools, a uh, Torx driver with a T25 and also a T30. So this is a reversible bit. Also in your toolkit that was included with the scooter, it's going to have all the tools to remove the battery if needed. And the last is going to be a Phillips driver. So technically three different tools. You know, kind of. But we'll go to the T25. You got the center cover. This is right between where you rest your feet. It's identical on the, uh, the Vespa 250s and 300s, Primavera, Sprint. Just a little bit different shape on these uh, Sprints and Primaveras and a smaller battery. One thing to keep in mind on GTS is if you have one of those, there's actually a couple of, there's a couple different variations of the batteries. So now I'm into the um, battery here. You can move this diagnostic connector and go to a T30, and this is your battery strap. And it's got a front and a rear to it. You can see this rear's got more of a step to it. And I'm just removing this to show you. I'm, I'm not going to pull the battery out. I don't suspect it to be bad. Um, I'll show you how I check the batteries here in the shop. But 
Um, you got the two terminals, you want to loose it, you can see we've added a battery tender to the scooter. So underneath I have a battery tender wire routed out to the back. Uh, same if you're doing maybe horn wiring, you want to uh, add an extra accessory off this. So it's pretty much you got the two terminals sandwiched. And the positive right there is always going to be on the red. And same with the battery tender, you see it's marked with a red. Uh, your negative is going to be black. Nice thing about any of these modern bikes, if you put the battery in reverse, the wires won't physically reach to the wrong terminals. On some of the older Vespas, you can easily reverse them. You just got to make sure you get red to plus, black to minus. And this is something you want to check every once in a while. I notice they come loose just from the vibration. Let's go in there and crank on those uh, two battery screws. And that's, that's, I use the Phillips right there. So the Tesla battery, this isn't something any home user is going to have, but I'll just show how to test, you know, the test. Say if you had a battery that was questionable, you put a charger on it, you know, the battery lists the recommended current to charge it. Pretty much a battery tender style charger would be your most ideal solution for charging this battery. I don't recommend using a car charger unless it has specific modes for testing smaller or charging smaller batteries. But pretty much I hooked up my tester, negative and positive. Um, kind of show you how this works. And it's in vehicle, top post, motorcycle, in service. This is a Midtronics tester. I don't remember what it costs, but it's not something a home user probably would ever want to need. But any workshop, you'd find a similar tester. And these are quite accurate on giving you an idea of the battery life. Set the battery, it's a YTX 7L BS. That's the battery that came with this scooter here. And the correct battery, it's gonna do its special test. Good battery, no issues there. And I went suspecting issues, this bike, like I said, it's a year, a little over a year old, no issues. I'm not gonna go through all the other tests that this thing does, but test the battery, it's good, has a good charge, no issues there. But again, the battery terminals, that's something as a Vespa owner, you should check that. I have a lot of scooters come in here with either corrosion on the terminals or loose terminals and they're, somebody's asking why it doesn't start. All I go in there and I just go in there and it's like, oh, well, you got a loose battery terminal. And one thing, like I said, with the, the vibration, it just tends to um, loosen up those terminals over time. And pretty much just button it all up, back up in the reverse order. Keep in mind these clips pop out. We have these available. I think the part number is CM017410 for the clips. Uh, same with the screws, we have those available. I see these missing quite frequently when somebody takes things off and they fall off, fall down into the, um, the scooter. Your diagnostic connector, kind of a little silly, but just tucks right in there. This goes on in the screws and there you go pretty much showed you the four primary things you should be checking on your Vespa. You know, like I said, I, if it's my own Vespa, I would probably check the tires every couple weeks, the oil every month, uh, the lights and the battery, you know, I'd, every month as well. You know, it's a good idea to make sure they're all in tip top shape. And check out all our other videos that we have for the Sprint Primavera. Vespa GTS, and so on. All the cool accessories we've got. Catch you next time. This is a robot here.